Hey Exoticals, I'm back with another video. So today's video, I wanted to talk about texturism and growing up with type 4 hair. So um, from an early age, I remember my mother putting a relaxer in my hair from the age of 7 years old. And I would be getting a relaxer almost throughout my entire childhood. Um, I would be in the salon almost as much as I was in church. I was a pastor's kid, so I would be in church a lot. And I used to play with toys that had long hair and I always wanted the long haired dolls. I used to make pretend with um, scarves and pretend they had long hair. I just had a thing with hair growing up. I remember always wanting to have long hair like my friends because I also grew up as a um, military kid. So I grew up around a lot of white and Asian people and you know their hair looks nothing like my hair. And, you know, my mom keeps manipulating my hair. If I wasn't getting a perm, I was getting the hot comb. It, effect, it affected my self-esteem, especially me growing up being mostly the only black girl almost at every school that I went to. One school, particularly when I was in between the second grade and the fifth grade, my dad was stationed in Hawaii. There's a lot of Filipino people there, and I was bullied for being black. There was one specific one specific bully, her name was Denise, I'll never forget her. She bullied me the most. Um, she would call me Blackie, and um, she would just make sure I'd, I'd feel like the odd ball. She actually even ended up hitting me in the head with a ball. It was it got bad like that. I never told my parents I was bullied. I should have, but I never told anybody. I just kind of just suppressed it and dealt with it. So I'm dealing with this and as a little kid, and. I'm dealing with hair issues as well. It affected my self-esteem a lot. I was also tender-headed, so I hated getting my hair done. So it was just not a pleasant experience being in the salon whatsoever. I have a quick story time. I remember being in the third grade. Um, I was in this class. Um, my teacher was teaching. Um, I remember sitting in my desk um, opening my crayon box and grabbing scissors and reaching to the back of my head and cutting out you know the kitchen part like the little bubbles that little bubble the little um you know the kitchens the area i remember cutting that out with my hair in class in the middle of class that was a memory that just never i always remember I, that was crazy looking back like i couldn't believe how my self-esteem was affected off of my hair. I remember going to the hood and, you know, cause me growing up military kid, I quote unquote talked white and acted white cause of how I grew up. And whenever I would go to the hood, um, I didn't experience colorism mind you until I came to the hood and around black people. I didn't understand it other until I came around I didn't even put it together until I became an adult that this was what I was experiencing. Like, I remember my grandma coming up to me one day when I was in her house and I was putting on some makeup or something in the bathroom and she was like, she saw me and was like, girl, you don't need to put on no makeup. You light skin, you don't need no makeup. And I just couldn't figure out what that, why she felt the need to mention my skin complexion. Um, I just remember always having a complex about my hair um, I love type 4 hair. I actually was natural for, I was natural three times in my life within a 10 year span. I kept going from natural to relaxed, back to natural, back to relaxed. The first time I went natural, back to relaxed. So the first time I went natural, cause I grew up with perms, but then as I grew up, I started learning about colorism because I was interested in understanding it. So when YouTube came around in 2007, I did research on it and I found some YouTubers. Um, one YouTuber name was J Love, J Love, I think, Tommy Sotomayor. I was watching videos like that back then because those were the only main two colorism channels back then. And I remember watching those videos and it was like, we should wear our hair how it naturally looks. And so me being in high school, about to go to college, I decided to start going natural. Um, I remember just started getting braids. 
and just braiding it into my new growth started coming in to a point where I had a little nice afro and then I could sport my afro and that's what I did. I loved it. I loved everything about it to the point where I dyed it. I got my hair dyed. I had it got dyed. Actually, I got dyed the wrong color than I really wanted it to be. It got dyed a honey blonde color and I wanted it like a like a brownish color. So it didn't come out the way I wanted it. But I was just so excited. I wanted to play with colors. And so I was natural for a second and every now and then I would get braids. But the reason why I didn't stay natural for this time was because around this time frame, I had met this guy um, and we started dating. And so around this time, I was, in, I was a junior in college. So from the time I graduated high school all the way until junior year, I was natural, rocking braids in and out and everything. For the, those three years and then my junior year comes so they so back up a little bit so before junior year starts the summertime is there right so during the summer times I would go home and visit my parents because I didn't have my own place yet and I would stay with them during like the winter breaks the summer break and I had an intern around the corner from my parents house that I would work at and I met this boy and we started dating while I was doing the summer back home and we hit it off he was attractive he was cute and we started you know hanging out and everything and as the summer ends I'm about to go back to school my school is about an hour away from home so I have to go back to school and my parents was like instead of staying in a dorm why don't you get your own apartment I was like okay cool so we got me a, my first apartment my junior year and so when I get my apartment and I'm st in my apartment by myself I told my boyfriend I got a place now and the, me and him ended up getting pregnant so I'm pregnant and um, I'm pregnant with this man's baby and he starts acting funny he starts I start seeing him less and less um, he's not coming with me to any of the appointments so I'm dealing with this pregnancy all by myself. It's a stressful pregnancy too. And uh, I'm living by myself in this apartment. In this apartment, um, I have to go up and down stairs to get to it. So I have to carry groceries by myself if I needed to go get groceries. It was an unpleasant experience. And then on top of that, I find out that he had a whole fiance. So I was the side girl. So. I, that's explained why I wasn't seeing them anymore as much and all of that. And so I'm going through all of this stress, pregnant, and I'm natural, so I'm, I can't keep doing my hair. And it's cause you know, I, it's just hard to manage already. Um, and getting braids, pregnant, sitting down for eight hours is just a lot. So I decided to get a perm, you know, so I can, manage my hair when I'm pregnant and you know so that's the second time <laughs> so that's the first time I went natural the second time I went natural and back to perm was military so I'm perm from the time I'm pregnant and up until I joined the military which is about a three year another three year gap or so yeah throughout three year gap um so i get my relaxer the day before i go to boot camp my very last re my very last relaxer before i go to boot camp because i'm going to be in boot camp for a while so i go to boot camp we can't get our hair done the px is at boot camp don't have nothing but wet girl products in it so you know my new growth's coming in you know every single day and I ain't got nothing to do with my hair. I ain't got no gel or nothing. And so it, boot camp was just terrible for me and my hair. Trying to deal with it, the new growth and everything. So I'm in boot camp for three months. We're about to graduate. Um, me and the black girls at boot camp, we're getting frustrated with our hair. We don't want to be looking crazy for graduation. So I remember one day 
right before graduation, me and all the black girls went downstairs to the drill sergeant and we told him, and we asked him, can you please take us to the black hair salons because we can't, we gotta get our hair done before graduation. And it was this whole big deal until we finally convinced them to take us. Cause they just didn't understand that our hair was just different. And so we had to convince them that our hair was different. We need a certain product. So they took us. And so, you know, we were able to do something for graduation. But then as soon as graduation, we get sent to AIT for, that's another three months of being, not being able to get go to a salon or anything. Cause we're in AIT. But AIT is a little bit more loose, right? So we, every weekend we were able to at least go to the PX and shop. And so, the PX had like black products in sections. Like you know how Walmart has that little one black section. So the PX has something similar to that. And so we would get, I would get the perm box. And I remember putting the perm in my hair myself in my AIT dorm room and my barracks. So I did a horrible job with that, but I was trying to maintain my hair. And so I was like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do with my hair? So I started playing with clip ends and that's when I started wearing clip-ins. But I'm still dealing with my hair growing in and like, oh. And so like when AIT ends, they don't even give us a like time to go home and visit family. We get sent straight to our duty stations. My duty station was Kansas. Kansas. Nothing but white people, right? So I get sent to Kansas. This is terrible. So I couldn't find a hairstylist out there that can do my hair. And so I was like, at this point, I might as well just go back to being natural again. And so that's what I started to do. Um, so I started to just grow it out again. So I'm in Kansas up until for three months, and then we get shipped to we get shipped to Poland for deployment. And I'm like, Poland has no black people either. How am I gonna get my hair done out there? So I'm struggling with that. And so we get to Poland and there's no PX. We, we're living outside in tents. It's terrible. I'm like, what am I gonna do with my hair? So I remember before we got shipped to, to Poland, before we got shipped to Poland, I put braids in my hair myself. It took me three days to do it, but I was like, I'm not going out like this. I'm about to go to Poland and I have my hair looking crazy. So I put braids in my hair right before we leave. So I have braids in. And we're in Poland for, we're in Poland for at least four months. And so, you know, my braids are, bra come, my braids are growing out. So I eventually have to take those out. <coughs> my hair started looking so bad that I remember my first sergeant pulling um, me and a few other black girls aside and having a whole meeting with us in a room talking about hair policies and a better way to take care of our hair. And I thought, if this ain't the most racist thing, cause mind you, my first sergeant already had racist tendencies. So this wasn't really a surprise that he would do this. And so there was no hair loss for us black women in the army yet at this time. So, but anyway, um, I eventually was like, F it. I'm just gonna go natural again. So, so I, once I took the braids out, I cut off all the rest of the perm that was in my hair and I just went natural for the rest of the time we were in Poland so from Poland we ended up in Germany a few months after that and Germany had a little bit more stores like more PX's like it had a PX with a salon in it it was a white salon but at this point it was good enough for me so I walked up in there and I asked them, do they do relaxers? And they said, yes. So I got a relaxer uh, from white people. And I was able to manage my hair while we were in the remaining of the deployment because of that salon. And so that was the second time I went from natural to relax. Third time, when I moved from Virginia to California, um, so a situation happened when me and my boyfriend decided to move to California from Virginia, so we drove out here. Before we drove out here, we found this place on Craigslist. And, um, you know, we set everything up with the person, 
paid a deposit and we're thinking everything's cool so we get in the car ready to drive to california making sure everything's okay with the landlord who's supposed to give me the keys when we arrive so when we drive we drive for three days we finally get to las vegas we i text the lady we're like we're gonna be there in like two hours and i don't hear nothing from her as a matter of fact her number is no longer in service and i don't hear from her no more <clears throat> long story short we ended up getting scammed from this lady so we didn't have a place to stay and so me and him ended up pretty much homeless living in and out of hotel rooms for at least three months three to six months so we ended up <clears throat> so me and him ended up living in and out of hotels and fam his family members luckily he had family out there so we was living in between family and hotels for at least six months so because of that homeless situation i was struggling i didn't have any money i was uber eats and that was just to pay for the hotel room so i didn't have a way to do my hair and obviously i had to grow it back out again so that was the third time i went natural but then so a couple years after that which was last year i got a virgin relaxer and that was just because um maintenance i just i couldn't find a hairstylist this was during the pandemic when everything was getting weird with hairstylists and stuff. So it was just getting real hard to find somebody to do my hair. So I just went back to the perm and that's where I'm currently at now. I currently wear a perm with um, clip-in extensions. And so that's just what I rock now. I love 4C hair, it's just hard to manage, it's hard to maintain. It's hard to just come up with styles especially mines because i don't know about y'all's but mines cannot hold water it soaks up everything and i can't seem to own um, like my hair is so dry y'all i can't seem to uh, keep any moisture in my hair whatsoever so i love it it's just i can't do anything with it it's easier for me to just maintain a relaxer and that you know every now and then i'll do little cute styles with clip-ins and so um i've been thinking about some alternative styles to kind of help with my hair um i was thinking about getting locks i just the only thing about locks is once you get them in you that's the only style you can really stick with i mean you can you can do different braiding styles but you know sometimes for me i like Sometimes I like to wear my hair straight. Sometimes I like to wear it curly. I mean, I guess I could do it with locks too. I just have to get used to them though. And then I gotta get through the whole ugly phase, that part. But I do, I'm thinking about locks. I'm definitely getting braids next week. Um, so I'm at least twist it to be exact, actually. So I'm gonna try to braid out my hair for at least the next year to kind of just for a protective style, you know. What are you guys' thoughts? What are you guys' experience with type 4 hair? Is it easy to maintain for y'all? Let me know. This is a safe space for us to talk about all of these issues and just have girl talk. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.